The lions are in want and suffer hunger. O Lord, you redeem the life of your servants. The second reading for today comes from the third chapter of 1 John. The introduction to the second reading says, A servant, oh, excuse me, a saint is one who has been set apart by God for God's purposes. God, out of divine love, set us apart to be the children of God. Our holy hope is that we shall see God as God really is. The second reading. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him. For we shall see him as he is, and all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Here ends the second reading, the word of the Lord. Gospel according to Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Grace be unto you and peace from God the Father Almighty and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Are you a blessing to someone else? In search of blessing? Or are you the person who is seeking ways to impart blessing on others? Our gospel lesson can get confusing at times when we dissect what the Beatitudes truly are trying to teach us. Is it teaching us that if we are poor, mourn, meek, or hunger, this is a good thing? Is it teaching us if we are merciful or pure in heart, if we are peacemaker, that these are good things? The answer is yes and no. When Jesus blesses the poor or marginalized, he's not expecting them to be happy in their lacking in material things. Yet he affirms that they are rich spiritually because they have welcomed God into their lives. And these statements are charges against those who do not seek out to ensure their neighbor is cared for. They are statements that are directed at the core of our heart for not living out righteousness. 
So from Moses to Jesus, the call to live a life of holiness and righteousness is not moralistic as much as it is a response of gratitude for God's graceful deeds and a call to embodied recognition of God's holiness. We are called to be accountable to those with whom we have relationship and to those with whom we should have a relationship. I recall the time I spoke to my sister-in-law, and some of you have heard about this before, with her cancer, which was a very difficult task for me. And I say task because so many of us tiptoe around issues, trying not to offend when we should be worrying about the health and well-being of the one we love. I was afraid to talk to her about her cancer because I had no idea how she would react or if it would really bother her. I mean, every time we talked or visited, she was so upbeat and never let anything on that she was being bothered. Amy was the most gracious and loving person I have ever met, and I am sad she is gone. However, the thing that really hit me like a hammer when I finally talked to her about her experience with cancer was that in some relationships she had been abandoned. Friends and family, friends and even family ceased their interactions with her or it was so strained it was painful. In reflecting back on her enormous journey and her battle with cancer, I'm loath to say that I was not a blessing to her until much later in her experience. I was afraid of the implication of talking to her, being cautious not to bring undue stress to her as she battled this terrible, awful disease, afraid she would become emotional or even angry at the prospect of speaking about the plague in her body. Yet that was the very thing that she lamented, that people weren't more bold about having open and honest conversations with her and sharing her journey. We don't know until we truly don't know. I believe a lesson for me in this situation was that while we might be fearful of offending, We also miss out because we never asked. We never had the courage to open the dialogue to be the blessing that someone may be missing. And I think in our culture today, we've become so accustomed to try not to offend. We miss the mark in being open and sharing life with those around us. How are we truly going to be a blessing to someone else to give them what they are seeking, to share their journey if we don't have the courage to open up our own hearts and become beside those who need it. Not only does this open the door for us to share in the journey of someone else, it's creating the opportunity to share our journey, our trials, our heartbreaks with those who are also seeking to be a blessing. Amy was truly a blessing to everyone she met, which was attested to by the number of lives touched by her who came and shared stories when she died. Sometimes trying to be a blessing to others can be a challenge. Sometimes they're not ready to welcome it in their lives as they struggle with whatever is going on. These are the times when we just need to come beside and are patient We listen, we wait for the opportunity to present itself in which we can share the love of God with this person. We can bolster hope in the time of adversity and we can share in the joy of overcoming whatever the situation. I often struggled with this in my journey to repair the relationship I had with my dad. Many times I would say, hey, I've tried, it's on him. Realistically, though, I continued to work at it, trying to understand the path God had set out for me, and it was not easy. 
Christ calls us to be merciful towards those with whom we have interpersonal relationship. It means we have to be willing to repay or forgive a debt against us as we know and are told that God will also forgive us our debts. It's not a matter of pleasing ourselves, but rather to do what is pleasing in the eyes of God to really hear the Holy Spirit speaking to us and give us a path forward in being pure of heart. For if we harbor resentment, anger, fear, or pain, that's what will come back to us. By being pure of heart, we turn over all of these feelings to God and await God's blessing in God's time. I tried to make peace with all that had gone on in my life and never really tried to understand the lack of peace that may have been in his heart. Again, I was afraid to have that honest conversation and I was fearful for what answers I might uncover. And towards the end of his life, I tried to be that shalom maker, to be the one who tried to establish peace and I am hopeful I was able to make this a reality and give him some peace. So contrary to popular belief, being blessed in God's life has nothing to do with whether we are rich or poor, healthy or sick, highly placed in society or on the lower rungs. The blessing comes to those who have emptied themselves of everything and given all to God. We are then blessed with God's gifts of promise that we will experience God's abundant life. We will have been given the keys to our life with God and see what is truly good around and within us. The blessing pronounced on the merciful is we will receive mercy, meaning we who abide with God on our side will be treated with mercy on that final day of judgment. But in a broader sense, it may mean simply that we will see mercy prevail. Shouldn't our goal be to see those who have suffered be made whole and experience the goodness God has promised? In that itself is our reward. In that is what it means to share blessing with those who are seeking. Those with whom we've sought mercy will receive it. And those of us who have shared mercy will experience God's gift as well. The advent of God's kingdom is a blessing to those who value mercy because God also values mercy and when God rules, what God values becomes that reality. I believe we can shift our focus from ourselves to the others in our lives, to the others in our communities, and most important, to focus on being Christ in the world. In your lives, I am sure there are people who need to have someone come beside them. Perhaps you are the one who needs that shoulder. And no matter how hard it may seem when our efforts fall on deaf ears, we are still called to share blessing, and in return, we will receive our own blessing. As I have often mentioned, it is incumbent upon us to keep that door open to offer the opportunity for someone to come back to God, to come back to us and be truly blessed. I'd like you to take a brief moment now to search your heart, seeking the person who needs you to be a blessing in their life. See, search your heart to endeavor to overcome the fear and anxiety it may cause you to be the person who is the one to share Mercy. On this All Saints Sunday, we, when we remember those who've gone before us, we may lament there were things we could or should have done in the company of the saints before they departed us. Now is the time to let the past go and move on with the future. There's nothing to say we can't have those conversations now, albeit not in their earthly presence, but we can still be the one to experience mercy because we can take this moment to share mercy in our prayers. And further, once we've overcome that hurdle, 
we can take time to share mercy with those around us, those who are the ones still with us and are searching. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, and you are blessed because you have shared mercy where and when it is needed most. Amen. our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, light from light, true, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us turn our hearts to God, our breath, and life as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Holy God, the church triumphant gathers around your throne to praise you. We join them in worship and remember them and remember your sustaining grace in every generation. Heal our divisions. Show us unity in your presence. God, in your mercy, Amen. holy creator, we marvel at your creation revealed in the cycle of seasons, changing landscapes and the rise and fall of ocean tides. Turn us from selfish consumption and open us to gentle healing of the earth so that all creation thrives. God, in your mercy, Amen. holy advocate, we lift grateful hearts for the ability to vote and elect leaders Grant wisdom to those who will be elected and safety to poll workers. May civic leaders serve the whole community, especially all who are underrepresented or oppressed. God, in your mercy, Amen. holy healer, bless the brokenhearted and all who mourn. Send your compassion to all who grieve. Grant wholeness to those who are sick and accompany the dying. Be near to all who need you, especially Roxanne, JT, Dee Dee, Sue, Gil, Ann, Tom, Bishop Goal, Mark, Caroline, Robbie, Gary, Michael, and Mike. Those on our prayer list and those whom we name in our hearts are out loud. God, in your mercy, Amen. holy comforter, we pray for this congregation that the promise of your new life may be shared and experienced. We pray for the funeral ministry of this congregation that families and friends seeking your love find it here. God, in your mercy, Amen. holy one, for the saints who now rest in your mercy, especially police recruit Jesse Hernandez, we give you thanks. We remember their witness of faithfulness and love. Praise to you for the eternal life they've been given through Jesus Christ. God, in your mercy. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. In addition to our tradition of remembering our saints who have gone before us in the past year, we will also offer the opportunity for you to light a candle in memory of others. As in the past, our saint's name will be read, the bell tolled and the candle lit. This year, we will also have that candle area available for you to come up to the rail and light the candle in remembrance of others. Dolores Den, November 28th, 2022. Raymond Pettengill, December 12th, 2022. 
Thelma Powell, June 5th, 2023. Audrey McDougall, August 24th, 2023. Betty Walker, September 7th, 2023. Milton Den, October 8th, 2023. Marlene McGee, aunt of Kate Stoudemire, November 7th, 2022. Peggy Pertee, sister of Sam Perswell, December 16th, 2022. Robert Jenkins, friend of Keith and Deb Horton, December 16th, 2022. Dwayne Ferguson, a friend of Troy Keeney, December 17th, 2022. Gladys Harper Whedon, friend to Troy Keeney and family, January 1st, 2023. Robert Jack, father of Tony Jack, January 30th, 2023. Paul Zyman, uncle of Amy Mildenstein, April 22nd, 2023. Deborah Dull, cousin of Ed Sell and Diane Fable, April 26, 2023. Misty Lynn Green, mother of Cody Blog, April 26, 2023. Catherine Myers, friend of Keith and Deb Horton, May 19th, 2023. Verna Louise Wade, family friend of myself and my wife, May 22nd, 2023. Karen Rickinson, daughter of Audrey McDougall, June 4th, 2023. Warren Smith, brother-in-law of Merle Anderson, June 18th, 2023. Eric Fluman, cousin to the Folkart family, July 18th, 2023. Eleanor Hoffman, sister of Nancy McIntyre, July 21st, 2023. Jack Titmus, brother of Jim Titmus, August 18th, 2023. Gene Rutz, a friend of myself, August 18th, 2023. Jonathan Eshelman, nephew of Kay Wachter, September 6, 2023. Juvenile Da Silva, a relative of the McCluskey family, September 7, 2023. Jason Blaze Gamber Sr., family of Patty Rymel, September 11, 2023. Christy Donati, sister-in-law of Hope Donati, April, October 3rd, 2023. Judy Beal, a friend of Merle Anderson and Linda Yop, October 9th, 2023. Bill Anderson, father of Heather and Kelly Anderson, October 16th, 2023. Clint Pierre, a friend of Betsy Gallagher, October 21st, 2023 and Sue Cuisenberry, a cousin of Linda Yop, the spring of 2023. And at this point, I would invite you, if you care to come up, there are candles in the basket, light a candle at the candle and put it in the, the sand in the bowl. Come forth as you so desire.
peace of Christ be with you always. Also with you. Please share a sign of peace with your neighbor. Please stand as you're able. God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts towards those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gathered into one with the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome at Christ's table. Come as you are. The feast is prepared. The table is set. Come and eat.
Please stand as you're able. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you've united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Trust in God's mercy and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.